For number six, it's going to be a piecewise function. So piecewise means that you have two functions and you have some conditional statements on the end. So this means that x squared, you can only use that function if you're using any x values that are negative or less than zero. And you're going to use square root of x is going to be the only function you're going to use when your x values are positive or greater than zero. The first thing we want to do is answer these questions here. So these will be evaluate type questions that you'll do first. Then once you have that done, then you want to graph it. So let's do these first and we'll take a look at the graph. So we want to do f of zero. Okay, so f of zero, you put a zero in there for the first one only. Notice that zero is only included with that conditional statement for the very first one. So I don't want to put it in the bottom one. It's not included here. Uh, there's only going to be one equation that each uh, x value belongs to. So f of zero means we're going to use the first one. So we're going to put it into the x squared equation. So we actually plug the number into that and evaluate. So I have zero squared, which is zero, and that's the answer for i. For double i, we're doing f of nine. Okay, so nine is greater than zero, which means we're only gonna use the second equation only. That's negative, we put in a square root of nine, and we get negative three for the answer there. Next, nine fourths. Nine fourths is positive, that would be a number greater than zero, so we're gonna put it into the second equation again. So square root of nine fourths, that means that you're going to square root the top number and bottom number Separately, we get a negative 3 halves. That's our answer for that one. The last one, we're going to do f of negative 4. If it's negative, that means we have to use the first equation only because that is only for negative values. So we're going to put negative 4 in there and we're going to square it. Remember that negative squared is going to give you a positive number. We get 16 for the answer. So that's the answer for the first four parts. So now we have to graph these. Now, if you don't know what the shape of that looks like, these are going to end up being your, uh, the same type of functions you would have for the question that we had on transformations. Okay, but if you don't remember that or don't know what those look like, you could always make uh, tables for it if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to do them by working with the key points that we used before uh, in the previous one that we had with transformations. And these are some ones uh, we haven't seen yet. So we're going to do x squared and negative... Uh, square root of x. So what that's going to look like is first of all we have x squared if you're less than zero. Now if you look at your the graphs, the library functions that you have for x squared, that's the u-shaped graph that looks like this. However, it's not going to be a complete u because we're only going to have that one when you have negative x values. So it's going to look like a square but it's only going to be the left-hand side of that. So the key points would be, on the, coming in from the left, would be negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 4. And then it goes through uh, 0, 0, and it looks just like that. So the first part of the graph is going to just look like this. It's going to be the, uh, and that's going to keep going that way because uh, we can keep going because we're using all the values that are less than or equal to zero. So I've got, graph is going to look like that. It's uh, the left-hand portion of the U-shaped graph. Now, for the square root graph, normally the square root graph does this. It goes up. But we have a negative in front, which means that that's going to flip the graph over, so it's going to come down and do this. So here's the points that we, the key points we had for the square root. Normally we would have one, one, but instead of one, one, we're gonna go down this way. So we're gonna have one, negative one. Next, we have, normally we'd have four, two, but instead we're gonna go four, negative two. We still have a zero, so it's gonna do something like this. So the question is, okay, well, if this one's not included, will we have an open circle there? And the answer is no, because if you have a, an equal sign, that takes precedence over the open circle. Essentially what that does is it fills up the hole. If we were to graph this bottom one first, we'd have an open circle. If it was just that second line, it would be open. But because this one does include it, now we are going to go ahead and, uh, and close it. So we're not going to have an open circle there because when we did our evaluation part, we actually did evaluate 
f of 0 and we got 0 as a result. So that would end up being uh, right there. So that's how you're going to do that one. Uh, I use the library functions, but again, if you don't want to do it that way, we could just make a table of values. So one thing to mention about table of values, if you are going to do table of values for the first one, make sure the numbers you plug in, make sure you start with whatever this one is here. Make sure you start with that zero, and then all the numbers you pick should be less than zero, so you can try negative one, negative two, and so forth when you make that table. If you make a table for this one, make sure again you start with zero, so you know where the graph begins at. And then I would pick some convenient values there. I would pick a one and a four because we know that we can take the square root and we won't end up with decimals. So that's a tip that you can use if you want to make tables for this one.